say it by himself. So please welcome Professor Give it a little start. Uh, the title of this lecture, Models and Methods of Optimization in Deep Learning, is uh, on the one hand so specific, on the other hand not so. But the idea is to demonstrate the background of mathematics which is uh, behind of many calculations or elements of the algorithms in the deep learning procedures. But we have something like specific peculiarity of our team today. We have some students who are familiar with mathematics and optimization. But somebody know. And, uh, it is a so complicated problem, hard problem for me. How to deliver all the ideas, ideas concerning optimization with or, orientation for different groups of students. And I decided to formulate some maybe initial background for optimization for deep learning taking into account that lecture mostly devoted for people who is not familiar with optimization methods for the moment. For the students uh, which are good specialists in this question, it will be something like repetition. It is good maybe as well. But, uh, I would like to start with from some statements or key statements concerning the concept, concerning the uh, terminology, and uh, some maybe definitions. Deep learning is a type of machine learning which is a subset of artificial intelligence. This is the first statement. The next one. Machine learning is about computers been able to think and act with less human intervention. Deep learning, deep learning is about computers learning to think using structures modeled on the human brain. Uh, maybe you can agree with these statements or, or not, but this is the base of my future uh, uh, lecture. The next one, machine learning requires less computing power. Deep learning typically needs less ongoing human intervention. And more, deep learning can analyze images, videos, and unstructured data. In ways, machine learning, in ways, and the last, as I remember, every industry has career paths that involve machine and deep learning. So these areas are so popular and uh, necessary for specialists of our uh, areas. This is a so popular picture which demonstrates the relations between artificial intelligence as more general area of machine learning inside it and deep learning. And some comments concerning the explanation of these terms. Optimization. Mathematical optimization. This is something like uh, definition from From this glossary. Mathematical optimization or mathematical programming is the selection of a best element with regard to some criterion on the one hand and some restrictions which are forms 
with a set of available alternatives. Starting from that, we, uh, we can consider some simple case. An optimization problem consists of maximizing or minimizing a real function by systematically choosing input values from within an element set and computing the value of the function. So the idea of optimization, we have to analyze some elements of uh, available uh, set of alternatives and uh, using comparison of the alternatives or something else to choose the best element with orientation of, on computing the value of the goal function. Sometimes we use another approaches, another tools for optimizing the uh, optimization of the objective function. And uh, this is a very typical example of function of, of two variables with maximum point uh, and uh, algorithm or method of optimization should uh, deliver us to this point. Optimization problem. Maximizing or minimizing some function related to some set. This is a problem formulation. Often representing a range of choices available in certain situations. This is something like synonymical uh, explanation of an optimization problem. The function allows a comparison of the different choices for determining which might be best. And there are some common applications of optimization in general. Minimum cost, maximal profit, minimal error, optimal design, optimal management, variation principles, etc. Very large number of areas uh, needs we need optimization of single criteria, or maybe set of criteria if we have a multi criteria problem, and so on. There is a good source with uh, uh, some explanations, terminology, and examples on one of American resources. This is my recommendation to use the source for yourself. Let's come to artificial intelligence. Machine learning is closely related to optimization. Many learning problems are formulated as minimization of some loss function on training set of examples. So optimization is an important part of this process. And we consider later uh, diagram. Loss function, or loss functions, express the uh, discrepancy between the predictions of the model being trained and the actual problem instances. Very large of examples, but the classical one is the problem of classification. Uh, and uh, a set of other so popular examples in this area. This is a good, to my mind, this is a good diagram, uh, so-called road map of mathematics for machine learning. Not all the mathematics, but uh, in, in this picture. This is a part of uh, the road map. But here we have the basics of optimization and mathematical statistics as uh, tools for providing uh, neural networks. And on the left side, we have a list of usual or typical problems for machine learning. But on the right hand side, we have uh, tools uh, which support these uh, problems and uh, this and the approaches for solving the problems. And uh, you see optimization 
uh, in general with some set of methods and uh, cannot do it. No, no parametric optimization. This is so specific part of uh, the problems and the appropriate methods. <coughs> in general, the oral performance of a neural network depends on several factors. Maybe you know. And uh, maybe the main is the network architecture. But there is uh, only one factor among the many important components. And uh, the next one, the so important factor, is optimizer, which is used to feed the model. And the methods and problems of optimization in this area are concentrated in constructing and using uh, these factors, this optimizer. Uh, I would like to propose you an example which uh, explains the complexity of optimizing. The example is, uh, I think, interesting example, but not so small. Uh, the idea to illustrate the complexity of optimizing, and uh, the example is uh, an architecture ResNet 18, uh, which has 11 millions, million parameters. And uh, finding an optimal parameter configuration is locating a point in the multidimensional space with 11 million dimensions. If we use a brute force approach, known approach uh, which is enumerative, which proposes to compute, uh, uh, calculate uh, a value of function in each point of a grid, we should divide the space up to grid and select 10. And if we select only 10 points on each dimension, we will have to check these number of possible configurations calculate the loss function for each of them, and find the best. <laughs> to put this number in perspective, to try to evaluate this number, uh, we consider the observable universe. So this is uh, all the area around our Earth, which it may be ob uh, observed. And this universe has an about 10 power 19.3 atoms. And it is estimated the age of this universe by this number. If we check as many parameter configurations in each second from this number, as the number of atoms starting from the Big Bang, Big Bang, this is the region of our universe, uh, we would have been able to check this number of points. But this number is extremely small in comparison with our original problem, uh, which proposes uh, such number of calculations. So uh, it is a reason to understand the hardness of the optimization problems in the real uh, machine learning, deep learning uh, problems and situations. During this lecture, oh, so optimizers are pretty important. <laughs> this is a conclusion. <laughs> and uh, they are managing uh, this incomprehensible complexity, allowing you to train the neural networks in days instead of billion years. This is a good idea. And during the lecture, we try to consider the mathematics of optimizers and see how they solve this complex task. And uh, one more example. Nature also applies optimization, of course. And uh, 
many of these optimization processes are adopted into the optimization algorithms we know and use today. One class of algorithms is genetic algorithms, which are inspired by natural selection and uh, combining beta parents. Maybe you know this uh, class of algorithms. The simulated annealing algorithm it is inspired by thermodynamic processes of metal annealing. And the particle swarm optimization class of algorithms uh, works like a bee colony uh, when uh, they find food sources or, or maybe something else. But these algorithms don't propose us the good solutions because no mathematical foundation, no mathematical background, proof, and so on. But they work good sometimes. And uh, the next item of our next portion of our lecture, the basics of the optimization. And we will start from simple example uh, for explanation for of uh, main ideas. And let's consider a function of um, just one variable, which we would like to maximize. Uh, in machine learning, we generally try to minimize the loss function. But uh, starting from the idea of optimization, the minimization problem and the maximization problem are the same or so similar. And each algorithm which can maximize the function uh, may be used for minimization of the function. It is so simple to transform. And uh, we consider an example uh, of the one variable function of this uh, type. Let's imagine that this is a mountain and uh, we are climbers. And we need to try to reach the peak when we, maxim when we maximize the function, or maybe reach the minimal point from the peak of mount uh, mountain if we minimize. But we try to maximize now. And suppose that we are in the location marked by the uh, red dot, and our task, our problem is to maximize the function starting from this point. If you want to find the peak, which direction should we go? Of course, we should go where the slope is increasing. This concept is formalized by the derivative of a function. Mathematically, derivative is defined by this expression. So this is a limit of a ratio of increment of function by the increment of uh, argument of the function. And uh, it has a simple geometric explanation of meaning. Uh, we consider a function in the point x and the value of function in this point and the point y and value of function. And uh, if we try uh, to find y more closely to x, we will um, perceive the concept of the derivative. For any x and y, the passing through f on x and f on i is defined by equation. This is equation of a straight line. In general, we have any line defined by the expression with some values of a and b. Uh, and a quantity a is called the slope of the line. So, for different A and B, for different point Y, we have a family of uh, directions, family of uh, straight lines, and uh, the red one is the result of limitation. Uh, I should comment that uh, we have an opportunity to have a positive and negative values uh, and the OA and the rotation of the straight line 
changes and let y let choose y closer and closer to x this is our x and this is our y and if uh, our y is closer and closer to x as the, def the definition of the derivative we see that line becomes the tangent of the function graph at point x and this is a geometrical explanation the tangent is given by the uh, function and its direction can be described with a vector with two coordinates one and the derivative of uh, the function of the point x if we imagine ourselves again into the position of mountain clumber starting from specified point minus two we should go in the direction whereas the tangent is rising if the slope of the tangent is large you would also like to take a large step while the slope is close to zero we should take a smaller step to make sure we don't go over a peak and the this activity has a mathematical formalization with uh, uh, such uh, equation uh, here lambda is a parameter setting how large is the step should be in the right direction this is called the learning rate this is a very important parameter in uh, deep learning optimization algorithms in general, uh, more generalization of this expression leads to this recurrent formula. And the positive derivative means the tangent is increasing, thus we want to go forward, while negative derivative is a decreasing tangent, so we want to turn back. And we can visualize this process. We have initial point here, minus 2, and step by step constructing a serious sequence of points and uh, near the peak the distance between uh, consequent points uh, decreases and there are so in small distance between each other <coughs> as we can see the simple algorithm successfully found a peak based on the formula from previous slide however this is not the global maximum of the function. Why? Because this peak is larger. But we have reached only this one. So this is not the global maximum of the function, which can be seen by looking at the image. To get a little help of ourselves, this is a potential issue for a wide family of optimizing algorithms but there are solutions for it it is simple case with one variable of course so simple case and in this simple case we have only maximized a function of a single variable this is useful to illustrate only the, to illustrate the concept but uh, real life scenarios millions of variables can be present and uh, for neural networks this is definitely the case and in the next part of the lecture we consider how to use this approach for multi-dimensional functions optimizing in multiple dimensions we consider an example of function of two variables and uh, this is a surface and uh, the surface differ uh, from the previous uh, example of just one variable function. The concept of tangent line now is not well defined, since you have many lines which are tangent to a given point in the surface. In fact, we have a whole plane of them, and this is a tangent plane. However, this plane contains two very special directions. Let's suppose we look at the tangent plane in 
zero zero point. And the fix just one here, just one variable. The fix all the variables and just one variable is not fixed. And as a result, we obtain a function of a single variable, non-fixed variable. In our case, uh, these are two functions of variable x and y. And uh, these functions can be visualized by slicing the surface with a vertical plane perpendicular to one of the axes. This one and orthogonal to it. Where the plane and the surface meet is the graph of function depending on which plane you use. So, uh, in fact, we use a cutting planes for uh, these functions. And as a result, we have uh, to define the derivatives as partial derivatives. Partial derivatives. So, derivatives for functions of many variables for which uh, all the variables are fixed and just one uh, is a non-fixed variable. The idea is similar, but we have as many partial derivatives uh, as we have a number of variables uh, in our problem. And uh, each partial derivative represents a direction of the tangent plane. The value of partial derivative the value is the slope of the spatial tangent line and the direction of steepest accent is given by gradient which defined as a vector which, uh, which uh, has a number of coordinates uh, is uh, equal to number of variables and coordinates of this vector are partial derivative by appropriate variables. It is uh, possible to illustrate uh, the gradient um, as a direction in the parameter space. And uh, gradient can be visualized in two-dimensional plane here. The direction and the length of the vector characterizes the direction of in increasing and the rate of this increasing. Here we have large increasing, but here the small, and so on. And directions are different. To summarize, the big finding algorithm now for multidimensional functions is defined by this recurrent formula, which is called gradient ascent, because each next point leads to uh, the value of function which is greater than previous. And if we would like uh, to solve a minimization problem, we should just consider opposite direction and the orientation of uh, anti-gradient is opposite to increasing, so maximal decreasing in the point. This is gradient descent. After considering these uh, mathematical foundations, we'll come back to uh, the problem with neural networks. And let's suppose that our task is to classify images and dimensional feature vectors into C classes. Formalization leads to constructing neural network in uh, the type of function which uh, map the space of n dimensions to space of c dimensions. The neural network itself is a parameterized function. And we can denote its parameters with a single m-dimensional vector. These are parameters of a neural network. And to explicitly express dependence of parameters, we write function f 
which demonstrates dependence of parameter of the functions, parameters of the function. Training, training a neural network is equivalent of finding the minimum of the loss function j, which reflects the space of m dimensions, sp parametric space of a neural network, to a space of reals. Uh, and the loss function take uh, the form. J is the loss function, and L here, no, just L, X is ace ice data point, and the appropriate observation is Y. And L is a loss function for this couple of elements, X and Y. And here, uh, n, here in n components and capital, we construct a loss function in this mode. For instance, if j is a cross entropy loss, this is a, an example of a famous uh, function, we will have such expression where we have a vector of y variables, observations, and representing of f, like vector with c uh, coordinates. I don't know if you agree with the next phrase. This might seem simple enough, maybe for somebody it's simple, for somebody not, but this is a, a formalized representing of the uh, mathematical background. But uh, this is so difficult to compute. Why? In, in real life, the number of data points n can be in the millions, not to say the number of parameters m. So we have a sum uh, in the previous uh, slide with millions of terms for which we need to calculate millions of derivatives to minimize how this problem can be solved in practice. In practice, we have, for example, so-called stochastic gradient descent. To use gradient descent, we have to calculate the gradient of loss function introduced or chosen, which is computationally very intensive if n is large, of course. And n is hopefully very large because we deal with real problem. How we can simplify this uh, situation? One way to do this is to omit some members of the sum. Also, this may sound like ad hoc solution. It has solid theoretical foundations based on the law of large numbers. I will not propose you this theoretical foundation, uh, but it is uh, known and uh, it, base, it is based on uh, theory of probabilities and mathematical statistics. To elaborate more, this means this, that as we increase our training data, this is explanation of the idea of this proof, uh, if we increase our training data, data, our loss function converges to the true loss. As a consequence, if we subsample our data and only calculate the gradient for this subset of data for some i instead of the all, we still obtain a reasonable estimate if you compute enough. <coughs> this is called stochastic gradient descent, or CGD in short. In the opinion of many authors, there, uh, there were three fundamental developments which have enabled researchers and data scientists to effectively train deep neural networks. These are three 
uh, items, utilizing GPUs as a general purpose computing tool, backpropagation, and stochastic gradient descent. These are, these are three pillars, maybe, uh, which are the ground for achievements in this area. Uh, and starting from Z, the one of conclusion, uh, conclusion safe, safe to say that without stochastic gradient descent, wide adoption of deep learning as an approach would not have been possible. I don't know if there is a true or false, but this is a one of possible conclusions. As with almost every new approach, not for today, but for the moment of origin, SGD, stochastic gradient descent, also introduce a number of questions or problems. The question is, how large should be, should be size of our subsample? This is a question. Too small size might result in a noisy gradient estimation, while too large has diminishing returns. Selecting the subsample also needs to happen as here. This is a uh, separate problem. For example, if all the subsamples belong to one class, the estimate will probably be not very good. However, these issues can be solved in practice by experimentation and proper randomization of the data. And uh, there are uh, a number of different approaches, and uh, some of them, as I know, as I hope, uh, will be a topic of some lectures on this school. How to improve the gradient descent? There are some approaches or some tools which can help to obtain uh, more good solution. Gradient descent with the stochastic gradient descent as well has some problems which can make it ineffective under some circumstances. Circumstances. Uh, and uh, for instance, as we have seen, learning rate, learning rate controls the step size we will take in the direction of the gradient. And uh, this is uh, one of important problems in uh, realization of different optimization schemes. Generally, it can take two mistakes regarding this parameter, this learning rate. The first one, we can make the step too large, so the loss fails to converge and might even diverge. The second one, if the step is too small, we might never arrive at a local minimum because we go too slow. Let's consider a simple example. Uh, the function x plus sine x. And uh, we consider three situations. We start from the point uh, x0 with three different learning rates, alpha, which is equal 1, 0.1, and 0 0.01. And three pictures demonstrate differences between the results. Here, our region point 2.5 is large, relatively large learning rate, uh, lead to oscillation between these two points. This point is one, after one step we come here, after uh, the, on the next step the orientation uh, is, should be opposite, we come back and so on. We have jumping between two points here. In this situation, we construct a sequence of points which lead to local minima. And here, with a so small learning rate. We decrease the 
uh, very function very slowly. And after a series of experiments, we uh, don't reach the local minima. This situation may be illustrated on the, from the, another point of view. And uh, this is a graph depending number of steps and uh, coordinate x. And uh, these three cases is three different uh, learning rate value demonstrates different behavior. For the largest learning rate, we have oscillation between just two points, uh, minus three and zero. And uh, no perspective to reach uh, local minima based on this learning rate value. For learning rate so small, the reaching of the optimal point of local minima is so small. And uh, during these 20 steps, we cannot reach this point. But having this learning rate 0 0.1, we have decreasing, more strong decreasing here, not decreasing. This is a, this is a moving from the point original point till to point of local minima. At first, the uh, maybe uh, convergence is uh, more good, and uh, then we slowly uh, come to the point, and after some number of steps, we will get the point of local minima as shown as in uh, this middle picture. And uh, this is a comment for these three situations. This is a practically oscillating between two points and filing to converge to the local minima. We cannot reach the local minima with so large um, learning rate. For so small, the convergence seems to be very slow, and uh, with this value, uh, we have good uh, convergence. How do you determine this in a general setting? The main idea here is that the learning rate does not necessarily have to be constant. Maybe we have an opportunity to choose initial value and then change it and uh, fit maybe or calculate the learning rate step by step and maybe we will have better results. Heuristically, if the magnitude of the gradient itself is large, I remind you, magnitude of gradient is in fact is the length of the vector which shows uh, direction for increasing of, uh, of the function at the point. And if the magnitude of this gradient is large, we should reduce the learning rate to avoid jumping too far, to avoid the situation in our uh, first case. On the other hand, if the magnitude is small, it probably means that we are getting close to a local optimum. So this is a reason to make a decision. We are in the local neighborhood of the point of optimum, local optimum. So to avoid overshooting, the learning rate definitely should not be increased. It should decrease our steps and uh, maybe stop our process uh, under some uh, condition. Algorithms changing the learning rate dynamically are called adaptive. As an example of an adaptive algorithm, Algorithms is an algorithm at a grid. Uh, the example is 
popular but not the symbol. Uh, this is an example of adoptive algorithm. And it cumulatively stores gradient magnitude, magnitude and scales the learning rate with respect to z. And uh, this scaling is a result of calculating. Edegrad defines an accumulation variable R0, special accumulation variable, and updates it with the rule. Uh, we have a recurrent formula, and step by step we change in this uh, accumulation variable using procedure of component-wise product of two gradients of the loss function. What is component-wise product? This is product of two vectors. Product of first coordinate by first coordinate, second by second, and so on. And using this operation, we have a new updated value of this vector of accumulation variables. This accumulation variable then used to scale the learning rate. And this is a formula. In the space of our variables, we construct new variable based on uh, previous one, corrected by learning rate, and this special component. How behavior this? How is how this component behavior? The delta delta is a small number for numerical stability and the square root is taken component wise in this model so when the gradient in uh, in this formula so not in this in sorry this one is a gradient is large The accumulation variable grows rather fast, thus decreasing the learning rate. We decrease the learning rate using this uh, accumulation variable. When the parameter is near local minimum, gradients get smaller. It is the peculiarity of gradient near extremal point. Uh, so the learning rate decreases practically stops. This is just one example of mm, possible solution of this is a problem. And uh, it is maybe known that very large number of advanced optimization algorithms are uh, born every year solving a wide range of issues, different peculiarities of the problems. However, even, much, even with the most advanced methods, experimented with the learning rate and tuning it, it is very beneficial. So the problem is not solved for today. Regarding problems with a gradient descent, another uh, is, for instance, to make sure that we find a global optimum or a local optimum close to it in value. So, we have either uh, obtain the global solution, global minimum, it's, it is the best uh, solution, or the local minimum, which is close by the value of goal function to the global, good local minimum, close by the value of, of goal function to global. It is good as well. As you can see in previous example, gradient descent des des often get stuck in a bad local optimum. It is a problem as well. I would like to recommend you a very good uh, book uh, which 
devoted to the problem of uh, machine learning and deep learning. And the eighth chapter is devoted to optimization. The material is more deep than my lecture and it contains more mathematical tools for formalizing and explanation, different situations, but the uh, book contains very large number of examples of um, algorithms and uh, examples of uh, explanation of the algorithms. And I strongly recommend you this book for your self-development and increasing. And the very interesting conclusion of one of the authors. The choice of which algorithm to use at this point seems to depend largely on the user's familiarity with the algorithm for ease of hyperparameter tuning. So, starting from that, it is recommended to you to be familiar with a number of different approaches and to choose them based on your experience and maybe understanding of some details and uh, uh, as a result you will obtain the better uh, results of uh, calculations. And conclusion. The conclusion is formulated by some steps. The first one. We have learned the intuition behind gradients and defined them in a mathematically precise way. We formulated what is this. We seen that for any differentiable function, no matter the number of variables, the gradient always points towards the steepest accent, which is the foundation of the gradient descent algorithm basic algorithm and very large number of different uh, algorithms. Also, uh, it is conceptually very simple, maybe so simple. Uh, it has significant computational difficulties when applied to functions with a million of variables. And this problem may be solved by stochastic gradient descent However, there are more issues, getting stuck in a local optimum, selecting the learning rate, etc. These are only main problems of realization of uh, such algorithms. Uh, some details were available for you after starting using uh, at least one algorithm for at least one uh, problem. Because of this, optimization is hard and requires attention from both researchers and practitioners. In fact, there is a very active community out there making it constantly better with amazing results. Of course, each year uh, some very interesting papers uh, are published and uh, the papers describe uh, very interesting results of uh, intensive work of very active community in this era, and this is a fact. And uh, maybe last point here. After understanding the mathematical foundations of optimization for deep learning, now you are on the right path to improve the state of the art. Uh, before the finishing, before the finalizing my lecture, I would like uh, to say that this class of algorithms, which are based on gradient descent, uh, don't cover all the optimization approaches, classical optimization approaches. Uh, this class of algorithms is a very useful and effective for machine learning. But these algorithms belongs, belong to uh, so-called first-order 
class of algorithms. Why first order? Because uh, these algorithms use first derivative of the objective function, loss function here. It is uh, very useful because gradient has the specified uh, property to show to the maximal, incre maximal increasing of the function at the point. And this is a base of all the algorithms which will lead you to uh, maximal point, uh, to point of extreme. But it is not necessary use just gradient as this main shower to uh, the uh, extremal point. There are at least two very famous and uh, classical uh, types of optimization algorithms. The zero point methods. These methods does not use derivative. And uh, it is uh, uh, applicable and it is very useful when we cannot calculate the derivative. Because uh, maybe you know that not all the functions allow us to take a derivative. So how to use optimization approaches if we cannot calculate derivative? But we can calculate the function in each point. And uh, there are a large number of approaches which proposes how to choose the good direction for to increase or decrease in function from the current point. Uh, there are some methods which proposes a sample in the shape of polyhedra of different uh, classes and uh, the vertexes of polyhedra are the possible points for calculation uh, of the goal function and uh, based on these values, on comparison of these values, we have an opportunity to choose the direction without derivative. Or uh, network approaches, when, or not network, grid, grid approaches, when we construct a grid in the space of uh, variables and uh, in fact this is a uh, um, class of methods which allows to calculate values of function in the system of points to compare each other and uh, to obtain results for mostly for every uh, maybe bad functions for optimization not only non-differentiable but uh, very inconvenient functions but we have an opportunity to construct a grid to calculate uh, function in the system of uh, points to compare and to demonstrate not only the extremal point uh, local extrema like here but to demonstrate the surface of the function in general but these approaches are available only for small number of variables because it is impossible to have a million a billion of parameters to construct a grid with unlimited number of points and to calculate something it is impossible so this is a good approach very stable approach but only for small dimensions of space of variables on the other end of the spectrum of the methods there are methods of second order these methods propose calculation of second derivatives but second derivative uh, for function of uh, just one variable uh, characterizes convexes or non-convexes of the function but having a function of many variables, we uh, should calculate mixed Patel uh, derivative. And uh, it uh, forms a special matrix. And these matrices are elements of the procedures of, of expressions, which proposes constructing of sequence of point points from initial point till to point of uh, 
the local extremum uh, based on these information in for about uh, two derivatives, first and second. It is very useful, but more hard. Sometimes uh, using these approaches is uh, more hard and uh, for small dimensions, for uh, most more simple situations, it is acceptable. For hard situations and large number of variables, it is not acceptable as well. And we come back to stochastic gradient uh, descent with a different uh, with different attempts to approve uh, based on some heuristical approaches. So, uh, this is an um, attempt to recommend you, on the one hand, to, con to consider this class of algorithms as a main class, as a main base, main ground for optimization processes <coughs> in the deep learning, and to the other, on the other hand, take into account that there are some other approaches, they are classical for optimization as an area of knowledge, but uh, not simply acceptable uh, for this class of deep learning optimization problems. And uh, to recommend you some interesting sources, I prepared this slide. These are some papers which uh, are represented by links here, and uh, you will have this presentation. Uh, and uh, these articles are the papers are alloyed for downloading, and uh, to my mind, is so interesting. And this is my recommendation for you to uh, learn and to increase in this area. This is the end of my lecture. And uh, if you have questions or comments, I try to <laughs> read for them. There is a class of methods which are uh, entitled Newton methods. Uh, these methods uh, propose us to calculate a matrix of derivative by matrix because uh, if we have if we have function of two variables x and y, we have only two possibilities for partial derivative, either by x or by y. What about two derivatives? We have an opportunity to calculate two derivatives by uh, x or two derivatives by y or mixed derivative. And the order of derivative may be different at first x and z y or at first y and z x. And as a result, we construct a matrix which elements are this partial derivative. And uh, this matrix, in fact, our gradient is attempt of construct a linear approximation of objective function. Our pictures uh, in the, our slides proposes to construct approximation of nonlinear function. 
this linear to change in our problem this nonlinear function by linear and make a step uh, in the direction of which shows this linear function. This the possibilities of this class of methods uh, is limited by linearity of the function. But if we use two derivatives, in fact, we try to approximate the nonlinear fu function by quadrature function, not uh, by the straight line or plane, but by quadrature function. And uh, sometimes, in more, many situations, it is a better approximation, better changing of unknown our complicated function, better changing than linear. And uh, from this point of view, this is a bad. But from other point of view, it is uh, uh, it has more maybe computational problems, specific problems of uh, convergence of the methods. It is uh, known that convergence of Newton methods uh, is uh, so specific. Sometimes it is good. Uh, it allows to obtain the good results, but sometimes uh, it is no good uh, results with using this class of methods. I don't know if I answer your question, but this is a, my comment. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much. How I, I can use this, for example, in, in biology? I just I don't know, it's a like quite, quite right question, but um, where I can use it for biological, I don't know. Yes, maybe I try to explain. Uh, immediately using biology, this function, maybe it is so hard. But if you formulate a problem, for example, classification of biological objects, male, for example, or <laughs> something more interesting, you will maybe you use the neural network. And if you will use the neural network for classification, you have to train the network. And the process of training needs optimization of the loss function. And uh, my lecture uh, is an attempt to explain which mathematical foundations are used for constructing uh, computer programs. So how to train the program? Uh, network. How to train uh, the network using computer program which realizes different methods. Mm -hmm. There are very large number of possibilities in Python and the different um, libraries of Python to use a method or a program which realizes, for example, stochastic gradient descent. You should understand which parameters you should specify as initial parameters of this program, which results you will uh, receive, and uh, how to interpret these results. And uh, maybe if you will understand this mathematics, small, at least at small level, you will better understand the results of uh, your calculations. Using uh, already existing programs, a very large number of programs, in Circuit Leon, in uh, Pandas, in I don't know where, which realizes these methods. And you will choose appropriate program, and you're familiar with these methods, these ideas, and you choose a program, and you will use it effectively. So, for, for example, we can train network to analyze uh, Red's behavior, yes? Like for analyzing video with, with, with Red's. Yes. To make it like more automatically, not by manual. Yes, and if you understand which network, neural network you choose, which parameters you should train, you you have an opportunity during programming process call appropriate program with optimizer and formalize the inputs of the the program and uh, interpret the output. Thank you. Thank you very much.
much. Uh, I, I like your questions. <laughs> Um, we have a little bit time to slowly go to the lunch side. Um, I don't know who is guiding us today. Um, it's the same, the same lunch side. Yes, the same.